Today we're going to build a Minecraft server using a Raspberry Pi 3. You'll need to download Rufus, Advanced IP Scanner, Putty, and the latest Raspbian image available. This video is based on a guide by Daniel Lemire, which I've linked to in the description. I figured a video aid can sometimes be helpful for projects like this. So let's get started. First, you'll need to know a few commands. CD changes the directory or folder you're in. LS lists the files in the directory, and Nano is a text editor that we'll use to change and edit configuration files for the server. Okay, so first download Rufus and the latest Raspbian image, then you will use Rufus to burn the image to the microSD card. After that is completed, add a file with a name of just SSH and no file extension to the top folder of the SD card. This will allow it to boot and have SSH turned on automatically. Then put the SD card in the Raspberry Pi, connect power and ethernet and give it some time to boot up. Next, we will use advanced IP scanner to find the IP address. I put in a range for my network and ran a scan. I found my Raspberry Pi here at 1.113 and we need to remember that for the next step. Next, we will use putty to SSH into the Pi. We'll enter the IP address here and click open at the bottom. I also name it something right there to save. The default username is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. This is the same across all Raspberry Pis running Raspbian. Okay, so now we type in sudo raspi config to change the boot options. Now we just change the password for the Pi account. That's a security concern, considering that all the Pis come with a default password that's the same. Now we're going to change the host name. I named mine MC Raspberry Pi 2 because that's nice to see on my network. Now we're going to go to boot options and then change it to log console auto login text only. Now we're going to go back down to advanced options and we're going to expand the file system completely, which allows Linux to use the entire SD card, which we want to do because Minecraft worlds get big. Now we're going to go down to advanced options and change the memory splits to eight. So there isn't much memory being used for the graphic card. And then we're going to hit finish and reboot the Raspberry Pi right now. After it has finished rebooting, SSH back in with PuTTY. Then run sudo apt-get update to run updates on all the packages that are already installed on the Raspberry Pi. Then we'll run this next command as seen in the video to install a few more packages that are needed. Importantly, screen, because we'll be using that to resume the server console. Then we'll run screen-list to confirm that screen has been properly installed. Then next we will make a directory named Minecraft and we'll change directory into that folder. Copy and paste the wget line from the description and hit enter to run it. Now use the command as shown in the video to install the server. This process takes a long time and I didn't record the whole install. Then we'll want to change into the directory we installed it in, which is Minecraft. And we will want to run this script or command as seen in the video, the Java Dash Jar one, to try to start the server for the first time. Now, it can't actually start. We have not agreed to the EULA agreement file, which we will edit in just a minute to make sure we have agreed to it. Now, if it will just finish running here and you see it says you need to agree to the EULA in order to run the server so next we're going to use nano to edit this file and change false to true we just type in true here and then we'll use control X and control O to save and exit Press up twice and run that server start command again. This will actually try to start the server this time. And it has to generate the world and all the files that go along with it. So this takes a long time. I've sped this up here. It will not run this quickly for you. And when this is done, the server is running and you can test connecting to it. As you see here, I'm connecting. If I go back to the console, I'll be able to actually see my name connecting. And if you see here, Ject has logged in with entity ID 12. And I'm going back to Minecraft and it works just fine. Then we'll go back to the console 
and we'll type stop and hit enter to stop the server. Type nano minecraft.sh. This will be a script to automatically start the server for us. Next, you'll want to paste the script code that's in the description and change the spigot version to match yours. If you're not sure of this, leave it, use ls to find the file and edit it again. Then we'll run the one chmod plus x minecraft.sh to make the script executable, meaning it can now be used. We then use nano to edit spigot.yml so we can change the view distance to five. This is the reduced load on the server. To explain it a little bit further, every time a player connects to the server, they're loading chunks in their view, line of view. And if their view distance is shorter, they will not load as many chunks and thus reducing the load on the server. Since it's a Raspberry Pi, we want to be able to take the load down as much as possible. You can see here, I'm changing the view distance to five like I was just saying. And then I'm using Control O and Control X to save and exit Nano. Use Nano again to change server.properties. This is the actual configuration for the Minecraft server itself. You can change here a bunch of different things such as the level name, if you're going to use a different world you're already providing, I'll make another video for that. You want to change here the view distance to five here as well. And you can change the message of the day, which is visible in the connection list when people are looking at servers on their Minecraft client. Then we'll use control O and control X to save and exit again and get back to the command line. Now use this command as seen in the video to edit rc.local. We'll add a line just before the exit line so that it will run the startup server startup script every time this Raspberry Pi boots up. Then we'll use control O and control X to save and exit again. Now run period slash Minecraft dot SH to start the server with the script this time. Next, we're going to want to confirm that it's running by running screen dash R Minecraft to resume the Minecraft server screen. And you can see here it's loading libraries and starting the server slowly but surely. Now that the server has started, type stop and hit enter to stop the server so we can make some more changes. We still need to make another improvement. Use sudo nano to edit this file and change ram temp to yes. This allows more temporary files to stay in memory and the server can run a little better because Minecraft does have a lot of temporary files. You can use screen to get back to the server console to stop it, then reboot. I just rebooted here as I'm gonna replace the world with another one, but I recommend you stop the server properly first. After the server has rebooted, it should start automatically and you should be able to connect to it in Minecraft. I copied another world of mine over to the server so I can enjoy it from multiple computers and locations. If you want to access your server from outside your home though, you'll need to do some port forwarding on your router. I'm not going to cover that in this video since each router is a little different and that's a lot to cover. You will however need to port forward 25565 to your Pi's IP address. That's the important bit you'll need to know. Now you can enjoy your little Minecraft server. If you have questions or need help, just post a comment and I'll try to guide you through your issue to the best of my knowledge. Thanks for watching and until next time. See ya.